and I might have to start this over again because I'm really f***ing rusty. I can ride my bike with no handlebars. Alright. Greetings, motor guys and motor gals. Oh, welcome back to the 333. And boy, am I rusty. The first ride on the Beezer in 2021. Got a nice warm day today. And uh, yeah. So I'm still, I'm shaking out the cobwebs a little bit. It's funny when I come onto this bike from the, uh, from the Tenere, this feels like, like a fucking Grom, man. <laughs> and it's far, anybody who knows this bike knows it's far from a Grom, so. And that's not to uh, get into the whole testosterone bike debate, but it's a very well-mannered bike, but uh, make no mistake about it. It's got 143 horsepower, and uh, when I haven't ridden it in a while, yeah, I kind of forget that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, shaking out the cobwebs here, trying to smooth out my throttle, you know, definitely feels a lot different from the T7. The T7 is um, kind of a twitchy bike, I got to say. The, uh, the Beezer, the 1000 here, is pretty well behaved on its throttle manners. The T7 is a typical Yamaha and is not. So, uh, so first ride out on the CB1000R, it feels good to be out here today. We got temperatures in the 60s in New Jersey, in the beautiful, the beautiful state of New Jersey. God, I fucking hate New Jersey. And Jersey, Jersey, uh, Jersey Nick Moto and I had a couple discussions over the winter time about how much we're starting to hate in New Jersey. And we're, and we're allowed to say that, you know, not to go on a rant here that has nothing to do with the topic that I'm gonna be vlogging about today. But uh, I got a little catch up here, man. I got a little catch up ranting to get through. But uh, really not feeling New Jersey anymore, man. Gotta say, not feeling it. So enough of my bitching and complaining. How's everybody doing? Hopefully your 2021 is going well. Um, off to kind of a weird start i think i don't know I'm, i was kind of hopeful for 2021 being a better year uh but i'm not sure so far i'm hoping it'll be a better motorcycling year uh, but uh yeah the topic that i picked for today even though i'm out on the beezer is taming your tall adventure bike yes taming your tall adventure bike so uh just to sort of uh recoup from last season for all of you who may be new to the channel uh, or just haven't been keeping up um, around October I decided to you know take a step in a different direction and I bought an adventure bike so I bought a 2020 Yamaha Tenere 700 uh, commonly referred to as a T7 and I've just been calling it the mule because that's what it looks like a big stupid mule and it's really tall and it's really, and it kind of misbehaves like a mule. <laughs> it's a typical Yamaha. Um, and so I got out on it like about maybe five or six times before the weather started to take a shit up here in the Northeast. And um, the most memorable outage I had was in the Pine Barrens where the bike dumped me like six times or I dumped the bike six times, however you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, I'm still, I still have like PTSD from that. <laughs> uh yeah so uh so it was very clear to me um that i needed to do something to tame this bike better it was I, 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 after that ride i was like okay i either gotta make this bike work for me or i gotta get rid of it because um you know it just was it's just a big it's it's not a big bike it's just a tall motherfucker, man like it's a really tall bike i never had a career laid out for me in the nba I'm a typical New Jersey Italian guy. My attitude is much bigger than my body size. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that bike is not designed for me, man. You know, not at all. Um, you know, so this is a big ass bike for me. It's like a big ass off-road bike for me. And, uh, and on the road, it's phenomenal. I mean, on the street, it is a phenomenal bike. I mean, it just really feels planted. It is that mt07 engine it's just ridiculously good on the road like way better than it you would think it would be uh but off-road uh it's kind of a beast and if you don't know how to ride off-road 
and the bike is tall and you're not that you're not that big of a guy like I am uh, it's 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 a bit to handle off-road it is it's it's a little intimidating um, you know when you hit like deep sand or or you know or heavy mud that front end on that bike just kind of goes where it wants to go <laughs> Sunday morning Dunkin Donuts yeah so anyway um, you know I figured I've had some experiences on this bike I've done I did a lot of tweaking on the bike over the winter time and took it out for a shakeout last all last weekend put about 400 miles on it and it feels great um, but I figured I would share like if you're you know I know there's a lot of people that are sort of considering adventure bikes there's a lot of these mid-level adventure bikes uh, that are out there so there's things like the T7 and there's like uh, the Triumph Tiger uh, 900 and there's like the Versus and the um, I guess like the CB500X the Honda which is a bit smaller um, and there's like the KTM's the 790 and I think like the 890 adventure bikes so a lot of people are kind of checking these out or having the ideas that they might want to buy one um, and so I figured I would just share with you you know based on my size and my experience so far in kind of getting this bike um, tamed if you will and what I did you know so I know the stuff that I did may not may not fly with a lot of people I know particularly with the sort of hardcore dirt bike riders they're not necessarily going to agree with the with the things that I decided to do to my bike to make it more comfortable for me but my whole thing is you got to make your bike work for you man you can't worry about what other people think or what works for other people your bike has to work for you you're riding it you have to control the thing so it's got to work for you and um you know stock from the dealership the t7 just wasn't working for me it was too tall so i am going to put in i took a lot of footage of uh, walk around footage you know i don't have my um i don't have my adventure helmet set up for vlogging yet that's why i don't really vlog from the t7 i do uh shoulder cam footage i put my i put the gopro on a shoulder mount and i just i wear it when i go out on the t7 um but i do have some footage of riding from last weekend and i have some walk around footage here that i'll that i'll overlay as i'm talking about the different things that i did to sort of get the bike in line with um you know with how i ride and my size and making myself feel like comfortable on it uh the first thing that i think you have to get comfortable with and that you have to get in your mind before you even buy the bike is you're gonna need to get comfortable with the idea of tweaking your suspension um you know on this bike on the on the bees or the cb1000 here i do i took delivery of this from the dealership and uh, i haven't touched the suspension settings on this bike yeah, I think this bike seat height is somewhere, I know I'm going to be wrong about this, but I, I want to say it's somewhere like about just under 33 inches. It's probably like 32.5 or 32.7 inches. So when I get on this bike after being on the, on the T7, um, this has probably been shooting my chest the whole time. Hi. And so when I come off the T7 and I get on this bike, it's, it actually is kind of cool to get back on this bike because it feels so small, you know? like this bike felt when i first got this bike this bike felt like a beast and it still kind of feels like a beast i mean it's a muscular athletic naked bike um but it doesn't feel quite as beastly anymore you know what i mean and, you know power wise it does but size wise not at all so it feels like super small to me now i guess that's one advantage of kind of riding an adventure bike as the second bike um but when i took when i took delivery of this bike from the dealership you know the suspension is perfect on it i mean i don't know if it's set perfectly for me but it's the suspension's kind of stiff um you can adjust the front forks the preload on the back is one of those sort of wrench um you know those ratcheted kind of wrench deals on the back spring so i just haven't messed with it i mean it was set i think it's set for sort of a default you know rider size like a standard average rider size on this bike and i just found the um i found the suspension settings on this bike you know I, I maybe i'm too stupid to know any better but it just feels good to me like it feels good in the corners it feels planted all the time i never feel like loosey goosey on this bike um and i just haven't messed i haven't found the need to mess with the suspension settings on this bike at all and so i just never really bothered kind of trying to understand the different aspects of suspension settings you know i mean it just i just didn't mess with it you know i kept it the way it is and uh and i've just gone with it and it's been great uh but 
when you get an adventure bike like the T7, um, you're definitely gonna have to tweak the suspension settings because when I got that bike from the um, from the dealership, you know, all the suspension settings were kind of set to their maximum levels. So like the preload on the suspension was all kind of maxed out. And, um, and so what that sort of forces you to do is to kind of get an understanding of what those different suspension terms are and what they mean. And, it, and I'll be honest with you, it seems like, you know, it feels like algebra a little bit to me, like trying to understand uh, suspension settings. There's kind of a little bit to it, you know? It's, um, it's like clear as mud sometimes. Um, but I think if you understand some of the basic sort of concepts of it, you can dial your suspension in right, especially on an adventure bike. And at least the way I found it is on the T7, it's pretty easy to adjust on there once you sort of understand what's going on. And to give a small shout out, I mean, one of my favorite, um, my favorite pair of vloggers for a long time has been um, Ari Henning and Zach Quartz. You know, so they, they had their own kind of thing, I think on, I guess it was like the motorcycle news for a while, and now they're part of Revzilla. And so Ari Henning does like this fantastic series of kind of how-tos in the shop. He's, he's really good. And, and this current um, posting that I think he has out, which, which perfectly coincides with my topic for today, is he talks a lot about suspension basics. So if, you're, if you've just got an adventure bike, if you're thinking about getting an adventure bike, um, between, I guess, maybe what I'll share with you here and what he's posting about on his vlog um, in more detail, it should, he should give you sort of a good feel for some of the stuff that you have to deal with on suspension. So um, right out of the gate, and um, I'll put some footage up here. So the T7 has an adjustable rear suspension for preload. And, you know, it's kind of tucked up under the rear fender. And so um, unlike this bike, the T7 has an actual sort of um, easy to use hand dial on the rear suspension. And basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to set the preload. You get 10 settings on preload. So if you turn the dial all the way to the left, um, it's zero preload. And if you turn it all the way to the right, it's maximum preload or 10. And uh, I know I'm probably going to get this wrong. So if anybody out there is a bike mechanic and wants to clarify or correct me, feel free. But I'm going to explain preload the way I understand it. So there's basically like... Um, a couple of components of your rear suspension you have a shock you have a spring and then you have like the linkage that sort of hooks that into the swing arm on the back right so what preload does is preload kind of pre-compresses the spring a bit and it stiffens the shock so that when you take a bump you get like very little kind of rebound or bounciness in your suspension uh, but on an adventure bike um, that's not necessarily what you want you know, you want to kind of have a mix of traction and also suspension because you're going to be taking some bumps. You're going to be riding over rough surfaces and you don't really want to have a super stiff ride. You don't, you know, some guys, you know, especially guys that come from the off-road sort of motocross world, they like having that preload jacked all the way up for the same reason. They want to keep that, they want to keep those tires planted in the dirt. But if you're doing adventure riding where you're not really like super hardcore motocross enduro, you want to get some of the benefit of that big suspension. You want to have a comfortable ride. So you want to find the mix between the suspension settings and the traction. I guess the question is, is how does this sort of alleviate or how does this affect the height of the bike? Well, one of the things that people make a mistake on, at least from my reading, is they use the preload setting to alter the height of the bike. And that's not what the preload setting is for. The preload setting is to set the suspension correctly for your weight and the bike's weight so that you get, <coughs> excuse me, so that you get the right mix of traction and suspension benefits, right? That's what the preload is supposed to do. It's not supposed to be a height setting on the bike. So you shouldn't use your preload to set the height on the bike. But what I will say to you is there is a side benefit to dialing in your preload correctly. So if you're not a big rider, right, there's a, there's a component of preload and suspension that is referred to as sag. You know, not that kind of sag, but sag on the seat. If you have the preload kind of dampened down or softened up, 
um, you'll get some sag when you sit on the bike. And the benefit of that is that if it's a really tall bike, the sag will bring the height of the bike down. It will bring the seat height of the bike down a little bit. So on the rear suspension on the T7, um, you have about 10, you have 10 settings on the dial. 10 is the maximum. I have my preload set at about five. So I'm about halfway on the rear. And so, you know, the result of that, you know, the side benefit of that is that it cut about a half of inch of height off the bike. So when I tampened down, you know, when I got the bike from the dealership, the preload was all the way at 10. And so when I sat on the bike, it didn't budge. But when I messed around with the preload and kind of got it set to my body weight and my comfort level, and I ended up turning it down to about five, I got a little bit of a benefit on the height. So that was like the very first thing that I did. So I ended up cutting maybe about, I'm gonna say about a quarter to a half of an inch of height off of the overall height of the bike just by adjusting the preload properly. So those are the first things I did, no cost, no, you know, no components necessary, no purchase, just uh, you know, a screwdriver in your hand. And I dialed those settings in, you know, I kind of looked at a couple of videos, made sure I kind of understood how it worked. And then I dialed those preload settings in so that they were correct for my size. And I, in addition to that, I got a little bit of benefit on cutting some height off of the bike. That was the first kind of a tweak that I did on the T7. So then the second tweak that I did on the T7, um, which was a little bit more significant, but not too much, was I opted for the low profile Yamaha seat. Yamaha makes an OEM lower profile version seat, which takes about, I would say probably about three quarters of an inch off the height of the bike. So that was the second sort of tweak that I did. I bought the OEM low profile seat and I think I have some video of it here. And, um, and yeah, so that was sort of a, like an immediate, I felt a little bump down on the height of the seat. So when I first got the bike, you know, and it was completely stock, um, and I kind of demoed this on the first day that I had it out, like I was teetering from one foot to the other. I could not get even both balls of my feet down on the bike. I had to literally teeter from one foot to the other and uh, quite frankly, it was a little bit uncomfortable because when I would come to a red light, I would have to get actually get my entire hip off of one side of the bike or the other. I'd have to really kind of wrench my hip out and get my foot down. You know, for me, when I first got the T7, you know, and I was just riding it on the street, you know, I didn't like the feeling of having to like shift my hips all the way over and get my foot down. I mean, you can adjust to it, but it really was like kind of uncomfortable. Like, it was like as I'm coming to a stop sign, I'd have to like get my butt off the seat and shift my hip all the way over and kind of get ready to put my foot down, you know? And I just felt like that was like too tall for me. I, I just didn't like it and I didn't really want to ride that way. So between setting the setting the suspension sag, putting on the OEM lower, lower profile seat, um, I probably reduced the height of the bike about maybe, I would say in total, probably like an inch to an inch and a quarter, probably in total, right? And so I felt like I still wanted to go, you know, further, you know, I, I felt like I still wanted to sort of take the bike down. I wanted to feel comfortable on the bike. So that was when I got into sort of a little bit more serious of tweaking uh, in the garage over the winter. I put a, I put the, um, I guess I put the Rally Raid lowering links on the back. So Rally Raid makes a 40 millimeter um, lowering link set which you can put on the rear of the T7. And um, that ends up bringing kind of the rear of the bike down probably about, I would say probably about another three quarters of an inch to an inch. So it'll bring the rear of the bike down an inch. So when I did that, it was a dramatic difference, right? So I, I put the lowering links on, I was now able to get the balls of my feet, both feet solidly on the ground. Um, and in conjunction with that, the other side of that, that's also very important, is when you lower the rear linkages, you have to lower the front forks. If not, your bike will ride like it's doing a wheelie and you don't want to do that, right? So you want to kind of make a similar compensation to the front forks when you put lowering links on. And so, you know, the front forks and the rear suspension were now kind of synced up height-wise, they worked. And, um, and so that was that was pretty much predominantly what I did. Now, sort of one other note that you're gonna have to, and I know a lot of people who have lowered their bikes have run into this, and it's no different for the T7, 
if you go for the rally raid lowering kit with the 40 millimeters and you lower your front forks you are gonna have to put a different side stand on so I ended up finding the guy who made me a custom side stand on one of the uh, Tenere groups um, guy was a professional welder and he made me this really nice perfect replacement stand he also owned a t7 so he was able to fit the stand on his bike and then when he got it dialed in he welded it up and he shipped it to me and it's still a little too tall the stand i got from him is still a little bit too tall but it's better than the stock stand the stock stand uh once i lowered the bike you know it um, was just way too tall um and now other other companies are also making lower like rally raid just put out a uh, they put out a side stand that also corresponds with their lowering kit for the t7 so it's pretty nice so they made you know they made a side stand that perfectly matches their lowering kit so once you put the lowering kit on if you put their side stand on it should fit perfectly and um, also camel adv which is another um, really great company that makes products for both the ktms and the yamaha uh, they also make a lowered stand because you know i think a lot of people are ended up you know kind of lowering their bikes i mean it's a tall freaking bike man like it's a really tall bike and i don't think i'm the only one out there that's lowered anything you know um but yeah so that's what i chose to do over the winter i i, I worked on lowering the bike up and uh took it out for a shakeout ride last weekend put about three or four hundred miles on it and it feels great man it feels really really good i mean i only rode it on asphalt i didn't ride it on dirt yet after making all these changes to the bikes and maybe taking some training you know if i'm still like not feeling good off road then i'm probably not going to do it you know what i mean it's probably just not meant to be i mean i'm starting late like in life you know what i mean like starting off road riding at 53 is probably not advisable you know i like the bike i like how it i like how it handles i like how it feels um why is there so much traffic out here today man god i mean I, we get one nice day and there's like all this traffic it's like crazy man i just don't get it so anyway so that's kind of that you know that's the topic um you know if you have any questions if you're think if you're thinking about um you know getting into an adventure bike like a mid-level adventure bike or um you have questions about it like feel free to shoot me a note on uh you know you can direct message me on instagram if you're on instagram and uh i'll be happy to share with whatever whatever i whatever i've discovered the hard way i'll be more than happy to share with you uh that is my that is my vlog on how to tame your your giant ass adventure bike uh your tall adventure bike um you know it's good to be back out here riding and vlogging thanks for tuning in obviously leave your comments uh <laughs> call me names make fun of me whatever doesn't matter but uh, uh everybody be safe out there hopefully you're enjoying the weather in your neck of the woods 